All right, all right, welcome back. Hey, we got Gary online joining me in a second, and, and we're gonna have a hardcore discussion. So, can we get Gary online? I'm here. Hey, Gary. How are you? I think you're on mute. Not on my side. No, I'm joking because you put that out a <laughs> couple of days right. ago. <laughs> You're right. That was good, right? <laughs> Got you there. All right. Hey, hey, man. Great to have you with us. Much appreciated. We know how you're busy with Guy R. And uh, I thought that let's make this a little bit more interactive and not have only you talking as a keynote. I have a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Great to do it. I'd, I'd much rather chat. Yeah. So I'm going to... Start a little bit on marketing stuff, go a little bit on the bigger picture of content, and then in the end, I want to know one thing about the Jets. Yep. You got it. Okay. All right. So let's move on. COVID came. It's still here. It put us spending more time in front of our screens than ever. What does it mean for a marketer who needs to get their product or service in front of the eyeballs of the decision makers? Well, it really, you know, you know, first of all, hi, everybody. It's great to be here. I, you know, I think it comes down to the product itself. You know, for some people, it doesn't change anything. You know, it, it just doesn't. It, it, it has been a non-event. If nothing else, it's been an accelerator. On the flip side, for other people, it's been devastating because their product is physical or, or needs a lot of people if you're if you're in the concert music concert business it's it means that you have to adjust and go virtual and obviously there's different economics and different things to figure out so i would say realistically um it depends on what business you're in but all of it whether it's been better or worse um requires understanding the digital landscape of communication and that's something you know, we've been talking about for a decade. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then like a, how about, how about like a trusting platforms like Facebook and Google, other platforms? Uh, how, how do we put, believe that, that they will use our marketing dollars well? Or is it just up to the marketer creating the campaigns and fixing everything about tracking? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Facebook and Google are the global leaders um, outside of mainland China of platforms that have the best opportunity to give you a huge ROI, both on sales and branding. But to your point, I, I, it's like skiing. I don't know how to ski. So, mm -hmm. you know, even though skiing is, if I wanted to be an Olympian, um, skiing is a very viable option and very lucrative in endorsements and things of that nature, but I don't know how to use skis. Um, Google and Facebook are incredible options to build a business, to do marketing, to drive sales, to build brand. But if you don't know how to use it, it's not going to work and you're gonna waste money. And I think the biggest issue is that people fall into two camps, either math or art. And the reality is you have to take those two things and really know how to work them together. I think that's what I've done well. And I think that's what um, a lot of people need to think about. Okay, and then you also have under, under the uh, Wayner X, you have also this company called Tracer. Could you get yes, a little bit about what the Tracer I does? Tracer.tech, if you want to go check it out. It's business intelligence. It's, it's really um, a framework. It, in a lot of ways, it's there for marketers who use Excel, which is crazy. <laughs> it, so it's a, it's a SaaS tech business intelligence platform that allows you to really ultimately, the big goal, the reason we built it inside of VaynerMedia and then spun it out and made it a separate company was we wanted to know which content worked the best. And you know, when you're running 500 campaigns on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, it's very hard. This ta is a tagging system that against a KPI that allows you to measure and lets you see how much money you're spending every day in real time um, and and how effective the creative is, and and so that's been the main goal of Tracer. Okay, okay, and then let's talk a little bit about the content in a bigger picture. Picture like uh, how do you see content creation and consumption 
for coming to 2021 and beyond? Look, I, um, I, think, um, I think content creation is just communication mm -hmm. and communication is how the world works. So anybody who gets strong at the written word, at video creation, at picture creation, you know, that becomes an incredible um, framework to really expand your ambitions, whether selfish, selfless. And so I think that, um, I think that there's an incredible opportunity for content creators, communicators, mm -hmm. um, marketers, politicians, nonprofits, for-profit businesses. To me, the ability to make pictures, videos, and written words for the internet, Jan, is like oxygen. Mm -hmm. If you don't know how to do it, you're gonna suffocate. Your thing is not gonna work. And so I implore everybody who's watching this to finally take this serious. Um, you have to know how to communicate on the internet. And, and I, you know, again, I'm a, it's like I'm a broken record. This is something I've said in one shape or form for 15 years at this point. And I just hope that people finally get it. Yeah. Okay, and then how about the consum consumption part? How do you see, is there any trends? There's like, is there another TikTok coming? Stuff like that. Uh, all the these trend, Netflixes the trend, of the world yeah. and all these coming. The trend that I think people need to pay attention to is not what's coming, because that's not practical. It's mm -hmm. what's happening right now. Yeah. So to your point, TikTok and LinkedIn are the two places where there's organic reach. So without spending money, you can get a lot of people to see you. I think that needs to be very focused on. Uh, number two, I think that people need to um, really, really, really understand how to use Facebook and Instagram, YouTube pre-roll video to make their businesses successful. So to me, it's less about future trends. I also think owning the media. Yeah. So starting a podcast, doing a, a YouTube show, very, very, very important. Those things stand out for me. Yeah, there's no gatekeepers. You can there's no gatekeepers. Yours. Exactly. And and we've seen that play out in politics in the world now. Mm -hmm. And and I hope that helps people understand that they can take advantage of it too. Yeah. Then I want to a little bit talk about uh, yourself and the bigger the message. You've been recently talking about this POP pop. Maybe you could describe and you define on the younger people. But what does it mean then for people in 30s, 40s, 50s? Well, I think, you know, perspective, optimism, practicality, patience, you know. Um, I, I think about P&O a lot. I, I have a lot of P's and a lot of O's. Optimism and opportunity, patience, practicality, passion. Um, I, I just think that when you, when you think about how life actually works, life is how you see it. It's perspective. Either you see it good or you see it bad because there's only one life, but how we as humans interpret it is very important. I think, I think um, optimism matters, being hopeful matters instead of being pessimistic, another P that I don't like. I think being a practitioner matters, mm -hmm. Jan. You know, like, again, we talked about it earlier with skiing versus marketing. I think you know this about me. I'm, yeah. I do the work. I'm not, I'm not an author or a public speaker. I'm actually doing it, which lends itself to a lot more upside for me. Yeah. Um, and I, so, yeah, I think about those things. I mean, actually, just to take advantage of this format, you know, Jan, you've, been, you've been around me for a long time. What, what if I'm asking you, mm -hmm. because it's not me talking to everybody, now it's you talking to everybody, in these years that you've gotten to know me, what stands out to you that you think is a difference maker? Obviously, from my point of view, it's the consistency. Yeah. Obviously, consistency is there. And uh, like the, it's not what everybody see what you're on online, like online environment, but when you're, when you're with people, especially, then you believe, I know that you are genuine on your message. 
then that, that's been of course super important for me also being a, having a relationship together with you and hopefully yes. as we plan it's lo many years to come obviously but, but tell right. me then you were Please. referred to and we're now you're running like a company of 800 plus people now remotely people moved into new york they had to move out so can you give us a little bit of like a how it's been running a 800 remote people company now in the past months uh, you know pretty good actually um you know excuse me you know what i'm doing right now i'm actually typing to my hr team to do more more of what I, my, my answer to your question. So this is back to being efficient with your time. You know, the answer to your question, I just hit up my team and said, hey, I need you to keep doing more of these, they work. It's staying connected with people. It's grabbing a group of five, 10, 15, 20 people, mm -hmm. throwing them into a Zoom room and just talking. Um, but the remote work has really worked. People have been effective. People are, um, are we're staying connected through Zoom. Some people are getting fatigued, so you tell them to take a break and relax. Other people are finding themselves being very efficient. Everyone's dealing with it different. I think as a leader, you have to create space for mm -hmm. both. Whether whether you you know whether you need the room or don't need the room, I think it's important to create space for everybody. Yeah, and I know that you've been wanting to do one on ones with every employee like once a year, once a two a year. How, how are you, are you now able to do like, is it like five minute Zoom calls or uh, yes. how is it now happening now? Yep, I'm doing a ton of fives and tens. And yeah. I, you know, back to your point, you, you said once you got to know the real me and you watch me in real life, you're like, oh, okay, this is a nice person. This is not a facade. And you and I both know a lot of people that are facades. Yeah. They act one way on the internet, they're a different person. And you know how I think about the young? I think that's based on intent. What is my intent? Yes. My intent is admiration and legacy and kindness. That's my intent. So as you can imagine, if you're a CEO and your intent is to do that, to have a relationship with your people, well, then you're going to make five minutes and 10 minutes. Yeah. To, you know, um, and, and so I'm executing on my intent. Hmm. And of course, the one other intent in life that you have in the personal side is about New York Jets, this little yes. or big football team. Yeah. Yes, the, the so worst I, team in the worst team in football right now. Okay, I haven't. I'm not following, unfortunately. But like, I have let, like let, let me let me tell you what's going on, just for okay. your own fun. We've played six games and we've been destroyed in all six games. Oh shit! Yeah, all terrible. Right. Okay, but so then there need to be some change. Okay, so my question is actually, which I've never actually get a or proper answer or see into this like when you talk about buying the jets it can have broader meaning than like buying a lollipop right yes. so like yes. you can buy them with like a business partners or fully on your own like what's the deal on ownership that you will consider that you are the owner and that the goal has been accomplished my deep deep, deep um, ambition is to buy it in a manner that allows me to run it. I'm an operator. Mm -hmm. I, you know, if I'm unable to amass the wealth, which is gonna be significant work, and the timing doesn't work out when the ownership group that owns it now is putting it up for sale, um, I, don't re I don't know if I will, you know, what I will um, do if I'm unable to control the organization, if somebody wants to bring me in, be passive or a face, mm. we'll cross that bridge. But uh, but uh, I'm. But if you get fifty-one percent, uh, yes. Are you 100%. good? Even You're if I good. get twenty percent with five other, four others, and I get to be the operating partner, you know. So you don't have to raise two, two and a half billion on your own. That's right. Okay, super. Is there some, for the, to wrap it up, is there some one question that I didn't ask that is super important and you want to bring out now? No, I want to reinforce the most important part. I, I take very seriously being on stage and people watching. Please, my friends, please, and I'll get very close to the camera. Please, 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 please get good at the written word, videos, pictures, and the media spend to make them being seen. 
it is the most important aspect. It is the most important aspect. I, I really believe that the ability to communicate in 2021 will drive all the ambitions you have, whether for yourself or for someone else. So please get good at it. All right. Hey, Gary, thank you so Cheers, much. Cheers, my friend. Of course. Love you. Speak soon. Love you too. We'll talk soon. Bye. Bye, everyone. All right, that's Gary for this year, and hopefully we can get him to Finland or other country or events in the near future. So that's it with Gary, and then let's move to the next part of the program. Thank you.